Hi everybody, I'm Dan. That's Harry. If you want to follow Harry on Instagram, it's at H-A-R-R-Y S-V-C Dog. That's at H-A-R-R-Y S-V-C Dog, and he's welcome to have you. He posts whenever we do anything interesting. So Harry has been fishing with me on a kayak for a few years. We've been pretty much all over the United States, uh, up and down the West Coast. So there's a lot of California fishermen that have fished with Harry. Um, we've fished in Florida, we fished off of Texas. Right now we're currently in the Midwest in Minnesota um, and uh, we plan to make it out the East Coast too eventually and, and fish out there more than just Florida. Um, so my approach to these videos with joining Big Boy Kayak Outdoors is going to be more of kind of bringing the unsung story. I am not the best fisherman in the world and I'm not going to catch the most fish out there, the biggest fish, have the most epic battles. That's just not me. Um, but what I will do is talk to the people that are having those, interview them, get their take on things. Kind of give the people that don't have a YouTube channel a little bit of a voice. Let them tell their stories. Um, I definitely want to have some really good fish tales, talk about the ones that got away, the ones that you know just never really existed but got away um, because everybody has those stories and I want to talk about those fish that are this big well there, there's another hand in here somewhere yeah this big somewhere like that I don't know I want to talk about those fish uh, the ones that get away the the ones that you, you you after the fishing's done you're sitting around having a beer talking to your buddies those fish I want I want to get those stories so that's what I'm gonna do is try to pull those stories in um, Harry of course is going to be involved in that and then we'll, you'll get a lot of footage of Harry on the kayak he loves being out there he sits on the nose of any kayak I have and just sometimes he sleeps sometimes he barks sometimes he swims so uh, it's always an adventure with Harry so thank you very much thank you for the welcome and. Uh, so I am adding my lightning strike review right after this. I was the first person to purchase a lightning strike through the Indiegogo and um, I took it out of the water a few times and I just wanted to do a real quick review of it. So that's going to be right after this. So thank you very much and enjoy that way. As you can see, it's a pretty basic seat. There are three positions. This is the up position. That is the medium position. And that is the low position. So very windy, I would go low. Ocean, I would go low. The way you adjust the seat positions are those three little areas. You get the low, the medium, and the high. And to, to adjust the backrest, You use these straps right here, pull down. Um, I would change these plastic. Uh, on the other kayaks I've had that had these plastic straps, uh, buckles, they have broken. I would change them to the metal. Um, basically the exact same as the locking one here. So I would change those. The issue with changing those is that as you can see, the strap comes up. It's actually sewn to the seat. So you have to take the whole seat pad off take that in um, and get it changed that way you can take those bolts out there but there's no bolts in the back here to take it off to lock the seat in strap over this bar through over this bar and then you put it through this buckle right here so over this bar and this buckle you tighten it down um, and the seat will stay in position. To mount the transducer, you use this sculpter hole right here. You're probably gonna have to use the Hobie wiring kits to drill holes on either side to come all the way through. And then I am usually put them on the left side, but then drill a hole either here, here, or here, and use the mounting kit also to mount the the fish finder head on that rail. To lower the rudder, you just pull the cable out and let it loose. And that's how the, and this is the rudder down. As 
you can see, it just slides straight down. Um, I'm gonna have to redo that knot. This is the transducer mounting plate. You pull off those three screws and it mounts like any other transducer. The bottom of the kayak, it's a tri-hole design. Doesn't sit exactly level with the middle one being a little bit lower. So you're not gonna mount it flat on a crossbar. If you truck top it, you will have to put it upside down or get some like the Yakima guides or something like that that have the sides on them. Four transducer or four sculptor holes. Uh, these two here on the back are reinforced for a sculptor wheel set. Harry jumps on the front, looks at me, is enjoying itself, and is ready to go spend some time on the water. So, as you can see, it's a perfect spot for a small dog. Okay, now let's talk about performance of the kayak in comparison to other kayaks under $2,000 because that's how I'm going to look at it. The kayaks that come in under $2,000 are the Pescador Pilot, the Old Town Topwater, the Hobie Compass, uh, the Native Manta Ray, and um, the Feel Free Lure um, is just over 2000 so I'm not really going to throw that into this category. I'm going to throw that into an upper scale kayak. Um, so for those under $2,000, how this co compares to those, I would say it's very favorably, especially if they come in at the $1,749 price point. I think that would be, um, at the $1,749, it's definitely right there within everything else. Add in a paddle, because you always want to have a paddle. Add in the turbo fins, and you're right there at that just under $2,000 price point also. Um, so you should be right there with the Hobie Compass, with all the perks and everything. Now how does it compare the performance wise? So stability, it was a very stable kayak. I rocked it left, I rocked it right really, really hard, and I couldn't get it to, I didn't find the tipping point. Um, and I was trying to get to the tipping point to where I felt it was. Um, I didn't get there, and it was past where my radar 135 is, which was really surprising to me. Um, it was really stable. I don't stand up on kayaks. Uh, I'm just not that kind of fisherman, and I stood up on this um, and was felt myself being very stable. Um, I could move around. Um, I, did, I wasn't worried about going over the side or, or rolling the kayak. Speed-wise, it's definitely up there with, um, it's, if you put the turbo fins on there, it will be as fast as the, the Outback. Without the turbo fins, it's a little bit slower, um, but you throw the turbo fins on there, buy the mass, buy the turbo fins, throw them on there, and it's definitely going to keep up with the Outback um, and the Compass. It'll keep up with both those. It is not as fast as... Um, the higher end kayaks, such as the Radar, the Revo, um, you know, some of those really high end kayaks, it's not as fast as those, but it is faster than these, the, the than the ones at the same price point. And not that the Outback is in that price point; it's definitely a higher end kayak. Um, it turned very, very tight. It was about a. I did a couple left hand turns, a couple right hand turns. The circumference of the turn was about 15 feet, which is pretty good for a 12 foot kayak so it doesn't turn inside of itself but it turns really tight um, much better than the radar uh, much better than the pescadar pilot um, and much much better than the manta ray um, so it does turn better than those um, the compass you know the compass is you, you know it's it's got a pretty tight turn ratio too so um, it's about right there with the compass um, accessibility of everything it's right there with you um, the only thing I don't like is the seat, uh, being that it can't adjust the front and the back differently. So either it's b bottom, middle, or high. It's one of those three. There isn't a, I want my back lower than my front, um, you know, for that little bit of extra comfort. You, you can't do that. It's not adjustable that way. But that's all right, because it's, it, like I said, this is a lower end kayak. This is... A really a star kayak it's really good for guys wanting to get into fishing and to get into pedaling it's for that um, the other thing would be um, it, the question I get is I've gotten it from a lot of people and the question is would I take this kayak 
on the ocean. Um, I fish off the California coast. Um, I've been down to Los Buzos. Um, I fish Florida. So the question is asked to me, would I take this kayak into the ocean? And my answer is absolutely yes, 100% I would. Um, I usually tend to like to be in a larger kayak, a 14 footer, a 15 footer. Um, I think the, I had a Tarpon 120 for a while uh, and I wasn't comfortable with that in the ocean. It, it felt kind of tippy, it felt slow. Um, this would be stable enough and actually fast enough that I would feel really comfortable in this kayak in the ocean. Um, so if the retail prices where they're saying at $1,749, I think um, that's a fair price for this kayak. I think it's a good price point. I think it's right where it should be. Um, and because of the mods you can do to it, the few different mods like any kayak, you want to customize them. You want to add a couple things. Um, I'd have to look to see and measure to see if you can put, change that center hatch to, it's a circle to the square hatch, the Hobie square hatch. Um, I'd have to look at that. Um, I don't know if I would do that. I think the, the center hatch is, is plenty big. Um, and the, there's a spot for a hatch in the back. I'm, I, I know a lot of guys that like to have those back hatches. I'm not big on that, so I probably wouldn't do that. And again, I don't know if I would put a crate back in the back or if I would go with um, building my own out of PVC pipe or just using the, the um, bazooka tubes. So those are the options I have on that. Um, mounting the fish finder seems very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Just like a lot of kayaks, you got to cut the holes, use the, you know, use the wiring guides that come, you know, the Hobie wiring kit, and I think you'll be fine with that. Um, I, no qualms about this kayak at all. Uh, will I buy a second one? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I bought this one. To, uh, because I wanted to see how it is, everything. Um, I'm definitely going to use it, um, but I don't know. I, I, I like my radar. I like this kayak. Um, this kayak is much easier to transport than my radar, except for this one I have to transport upside down. I like the flatness at the bottom of the, the radar because I can just put it on my on my crossbars and not have to and strap it down and not have to worry about um, it cavitating or it you know causing that noise between the buffering between the hood of the car and the and the bottom of the kayak, um, but this one I you have to put upside down on the lightning. You, you, you mount it, you slide it up there upside down, and and, and do that. Um, so uh, to me, that's a little bit of a negative. However, overall, I really like the kayak. I love the stability of it. Uh, the turn ratio is quick, is good. It's quick enough for you know fishing, and um, it's it's definitely a. The kayak is 100% worth the price point and the retail price they're putting on the Indiegogo. It's definitely worth that. Add in the turbo fins, put in a paddle, you're at $2,000. This is a $2,000 kayak. And so, well done guys, very well done. I'm very happy with the kayak. Don't forget, like, subscribe, click the little bell for notifications, and add Harry on Instagram. It is at H-A-R-R-Y S-V-C dog. Looking forward to talking to you. Thank you for the welcome.